This is a really simple little clutch bag or an evening bag that's just made with three squares of fabric. You can use any size of squares, you can use any shape, it doesn't have to be squares of fabric. But the reason I've made the video is so that I can show you how to construct this purse so that you don't have any hand sewing all the way around the edge. So it's one continuous seam. The hand sewing, which you need to do when you turn your bag the right side out, is actually inside the pocket, inside here, right down at the bottom so you don't actually see that. It's very quick, it's very, very easy, but I think you'll agree it's very, very stylish. So this is what we need and this is how you make it. My squares of fabric measure 11 inches square, but you can have these any size you like. So you could make a much smaller bag, a larger bag. You could make them from a rectangle. You could even use an oval or a circle if you re really wanted to experiment. But mine are squares. So I've cut one piece of fabric for the outside of the bag. Um, I've put some fusible fleece on the wrong side of that. You could use wadding or batting if you wanted to, but just something to give it a little bit more stability. And then I've got one piece of lining fabric, which is cut to the same size. And then the front of the bag is the same size, but this time on the back, I've only put my fusible fleece halfway across. So I measured that simply by folding it in half and creasing, and then just putting the fleece on the one side, because one side's going to be the lining, so you don't really need the fleece on there. So this is how the bag's going to go together. So there's the outside. There's the lining, obviously these will be sewn. And then here is the front of the bag. So that's my 11 inch square folded in half, but with the fusible fleece side on the front of the bag like so. And then when the flap folds over, that's how my bag is going to look when it's finished. So it's a good idea to just put all the layers together so you understand the way that they work. What I'm also going to do is to put a wristlet onto one side of the bag so I can wrap it around my wrist and I don't have to carry it all the time. And I'm going to decorate on the front with a little bow as well. So I've already cut those and, uh, and made those up. So the first thing we need to do is to apply the magnetic clasp. So if you haven't seen these before, they come in two parts. There's a thin bit and a fat bit and two bags. So the fat bit goes on your bag, on the front of the bag, and the thin bit goes on the flap. It's the fat bit that's magnetic, the, the front isn't magnetic, but they do stick together. That's how the bag's going to be closed. And then you have two backing pieces as well. So let's measure and mark where these need to be. So of course I want it to be in the centre of the front of the bag. So I'll measure five and a half inches across and that's the centre front and I'm going to fold over the flap of my bag so I get an idea of where that's going to sit and I'll need the flap on the top to be about an inch from the edge so I know that my clasp needs to sit about here so when it folds over it's like that don't pull it too tight and fasten it because then if you do have anything you know like a I don't know mobile phone a little bit of makeup inside there the bag will be fatter and you won't be able to pull that close so we need to have just a little bit of give there so let's take this front piece there's my center line oh and I'm just using a friction pen so I have tested on a scrap piece of fabric first of all and I know that when this is heated with my iron the ink will just disappear but you can use a chalk or um, some kind of fabric pencil little brush away so let's open this pocket up, take the back section of, remember, the fat part of your clasp and place this over the hole, the mark. We're going to make a hole and draw a little line either side on those two bars. Then take your quick and pick or a very sharp small pair of scissors and you're just going to make a small incision either side on those lines. It's a lot better to make these very small and then increase them in length if you need to rather than risk making them very big, in which case you've got big holes and you're working and you have to start again. So then take the fatter part of your clasp, push the two prongs through the holes, turn your work over, place the back of the clasp over the holes at uh, the prongs and press those legs outwards purely because you find it easier than trying to press them inwards it doesn't matter either way so there's the clasp that goes on the front of my bag let's layer this all up together again 
So now I'm going to mark the centre point on the lining of my bag, Oops, which is, remember, five and a half inches in because my fabric is um, 11 inches wide. So let's just mark here. And remember, I need my clasp on the top. In fact, let's measure this to be about an inch from the top. Now, the reason I'm saying about an inch from the very edge of your fabric is because I'm going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance here. So if my seam allowance is too close to where the clasp is, so in other words, if my clasp is here, I'm not going to be able to sew around there. If it's just underneath the seam allowance, I've still got to get my machine foot there and it's going to make it difficult, difficult to manoeuvre. So that's why I've moved it down a little bit. And I'm just going to make sure now that when I fold the flap of my bag over, that's how it's going to fasten. I've got a little bit of room in there, so that's going to be absolutely perfect. So let's put the pocket to one side. Let's take the lining fabric and apply the second half of the clasp to the lining. What I'm going to do here is to add just a small piece of scrap fabric with some repositionable spray, a little bit of fabric glue, and that's going to help to reinforce the area where my clasp is going to go so it doesn't pull against the fabric and make holes. So just like before, take the back of your clasp, place it over the dot, draw your two little lines where you're going to cut, there's your quick unpick through both layers of the fabric, again making a small hole. If you've got a very sharp small pair of scissors, you could use that instead. Push the prongs through the hole like so. There's the back that goes on. And squish the legs open. Right, so now we can start sewing it all together. Let's rearrange it. I do find the easiest way when you're making up layers like this of, of actually constructing the bag to make sure that everything is in the right place is to just keeping it all back together again. So there's the front, there's the lining, there's the, the back of the bag and the flap. That all closes over and meets perfectly. I need to put my wristlet on there. So loop your ribbon over. This is half inch wide ribbon, which is 15 inches long. Make that as long or as short as you like. But 15 inches, I find I can put my hand through there quite easily and hold on to it. So that's a good length. And I want this to go just below the fold, but on the back of the bag. Don't put it on the flap, have it on the back. So fold your bag over. And I'm going to pin this and then tack it facing inwards just through the outer fabric, not through all of the layers. Like that. The bow can go on last. Okay. So let's start sewing it together. We take away those two pieces, but keep them together. So the first thing I'm going to do is to tack that ribbon in place. So I'm sewing quite close to the seam, so within the quarter of an inch seam allowance, so that's about an eighth of an inch from the edge, and that means I can take the pin out and work without the pin. And I'll just trim down the rest of the ribbon like so. Let's trim off my threads. Right. Put it back together again. So what I need to do now is to start sewing all of the side pieces together. But I don't want to see any seams around the outside. I want the only hand-sewn seam where I turn the whole thing through to be on the inside of the lining. So if my stitching isn't absolutely perfect, you're not going to see it, it'll be inside the pocket. So let's turn over the outer side of the bag and the pocket so that they're the right sides together. So take your bottom layer and put it on the top and then take away the lining. So I've got the right side of the back of the bag with my ribbon trapped in the centre placed over the side where the magnetic clasp is facing me. And I'm just going to sew across the bottom at this point. Thank you. 
This is with the quarter of an inch seam allowance. So this isn't tacking, this is actually the seam that goes across the bottom of the bag. It doesn't have to be exactly one quarter of an inch seam allowance as long as um, the seam allowance is uniform. So I tend to use the edge of the foot of my sewing machine, which I think is a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, but it really doesn't matter. And with a bag like this, you know, it doesn't have to fit, so it's not so important that that seam allowance is uniform. Let's take that away. So that's what we've got. So now we need to sew the lining and the outside of the bag right sides together. So let's turn it over. Make sure that you don't sew through that loop at any point. So now right sides together means that the pattern side of the back of the bag facing upwards and the side of the magnetic clasp is facing downwards. I'm going to put a few pins in there just to hold it all together. Pin's a bit bent. Now this time, I'm going to sew all the way around the edge. But this is where I'm going to leave my turning gap. And I'll leave a turning gap in the base here of around about four inches. I'm not going to measure that, but around about that much. So I'm sewing from the same side that I've just sewn. So my si stitch line stitch line sits over the top of the line that I've just just sewn. Gosh, that was difficult to say. So a few stitches backwards before I go forwards. And away we go. And I'm going to stop with the needle in the down position when I reach the corner here and pivot around, keeping my layers of fabric flat. And then literally I'm going to sew around the remaining three sides. Oh, I over sewed that a little bit, but don't worry, we'll go back again. That was just the magnetic class getting caught on my throat plate. Here it is, look, you can feel where the lump is. So that's why I didn't want to put that too close to the edge because now I'd be trying to manoeuvre my foot around there. If by chance you have put the class too close to the raw edge and you're having difficulty getting your, your sewing machine foot around it, then take your foot off and put the zipper foot on and that'll enable your needle to get closer to the left hand side. So now I'm coming back to where the, um, the ribbon is over the pocket, or the front of the bag, I should say, not the pocket. Back down to the stitch line where I started, and then sew back, remembering to leave that opening. So let's just go backwards a few stitches there. I'll take my pins out. That one broke. Take my work out. And then I'm snipping off the corners to reduce the amount of bulk that I have in the corners. And that means that um, my points will be pointier. And then we'll turn the whole thing the right side out. There's my gap. There we are. This will be very creased up, uh, creased up when it comes through. But I'll give that a press in just a second. So I'll push out my points. And when you turn it through, again, this, this needs pressing. I could even top stitch around there. That's what we're going to get. So it doesn't look quite right at the moment, but don't be concerned. Because what I need to do now is to hand sew that opening closed. This is, in effect, the inside of the pocket. So again, if your hand stitching isn't perfect, don't beat yourself up about it. So here, I'm going to go inside the seam allowance. And I'm just going to do an over edge stitch, actually, because again, you don't see this. Um, if it was a visible seam, then I'd be using a ladder stitch and trying to make that as perfect as I can. So I'm going to fold in the two raw edges together. And let's just do a quick little 
whip stitch, over edge stitch, doesn't really matter. So into the outer fabric and back through, in here and back through. And keep doing this until the, the whole of the opening is closed. So I'm just folding the lining over so it covers over that seam line as well, just to make it really neat. Particularly important if you're giving this away as a gift or if you're, um, if you're selling what you make. I don't know why, but somebody might look into the depths of the pocket or turn it inside out for some reason. But it's nice to have them finished off well. If you're uh, if you're passing your work on, shall we say? Okay, so just keep sewing. Won't take long. Almost at the end. Now, where the front of the bag was, uh, you can experiment now. This is basically just a video to give you the technique of um, having no visible hand stitching or opening shown on the outside of the bag. But that front of the bag could easily be a zip pocket. You could incorporate another pocket inside there, so you've got a divider in effect, so you've got two, um, two areas where you can keep your bits and bobs. You could make something like a, um, a tablet case uh, with extra pockets in there to keep things like pens and papers or business cards. Doesn't have to be made from flowery cotton. You could make it from um, a faux leather or denim or canvas or ticking or maybe something a little bit more masculine. Doesn't have to be girly. Don't have to put bows on it. Right, so that's where we are here. This will make sense. So now I'm going to turn the pocket over. These things can come in handy. Um, a long round ended knitting needle or something like a bamboo creaser to push out the points of the bag. Don't use your scissors. We've all tried it. We all get holes in our work. And that's how we are. So as you can see, um, I've got the ribbon just on the side there. Remember I put this just underneath the fold so it sits on the back of the bag, not on the front. Um, I've got a perfect seam all the way around the outside of my purse or my bag and that seam that I hand sewed is right on the inside of the pocket. I can fold that flap over and it will fasten perfectly. So all I need to do now is to press this, get rid of those pen marks and add my bow which I think I'm just going to put on one side. And you know what, this isn't going to go in the wash so I'm just going to pop that on with a little bit of glue. So there's my bag all finished. Um, I could, if I wanted to, just top stitch around the edge here and finish that off, but I thought it looked really nice and neat without. I put my bow on the front, that's just glued on. I'm fine with that because it's not going to go in the wash, so it's not going to come off. There's my magnetic fastening, and of course, on the inside, it's nice and neat. That's the only seam that you're going to see. But I hope you enjoy making yours. <laughs>